Hey everybody, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Clash Daytona. My name is Bob Babbitt, brought to you by the NASCAR Foundation, Daytona International Speedway, USA Triathlon, Aquasphere, and Varlow. A young man who we first met here, I think, at, at what was then Challenge Daytona a number of years ago. Now, uh, one of the very top triathletes on the planet, Mr. Magnus Dietliff, joins us, fresh off of a big win at Cozumel. That Cozumel was not just your... Uh, not just an Ironman for a guy who had never done an Ironman until this year. It was your fourth <laughs> Ironman of 2022. You were a crazy person, Magnus. Yeah, thank you. It's. Uh, I think uh, I'm happy that I got away with the win, but looking back on it, it was uh, probably one race too much this season. It was not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, sort of the mark of a champion is when you win on days that aren't your best right and, and it was so hot out there yeah i think it's uh, reflect reflecting on the event it has been difficult for me to judge whether i just wasn't feeling 100 percent because of all the racing or how much the heat actually affected me because i did some quite good trainings uh, training sessions in the heat yeah but i think uh, it was a combination of uh, storm coming in in the morning and then when the storm passed away, the sun came, and so the humidity went way and up. the heat uh, sort of made it. Uh, I I think I've never raced in conditions like this before, even on Hawaii or Co or wow. Dallas. Uh, it was I just couldn't control my heart rate or anything, even on the bike. Halfway through, it was just uh, racing and racing. So I had to every aid station sort of almost go out of the arrow position and just pour water over myself to try to get the body in some sort of balance. But it was just, yeah, really difficult. <laughs> so I watched yesterday when we're on the flight over here, I watched the Iron Man TV show and watching you go by people like they're standing still and then seeing you get a, a penalty that that was it was hard to watch because you ended up eighth. And with that five minutes, you, you might have been podium and you never know what could have happened yeah you never know i like to believe that i would have been able to maybe break away with sam uh, yes. laidlo on the bike of course i think the norwegians wouldn't have maybe let me uh, go away uh, that easily but still i think uh, a lot of things could have happened and it, it's easy for me to sit here and say that but i think it yeah it was it was basically after i qualified in texas it was the only thing that mattered in my head and I had sort of put a plan together the whole year after Texas towards that event with all sort of testing and narrow yes. stuff and so it was really a bummer. What has always impressed me about you is the, the, the way for somebody as young as you are uh, that you one were never afraid here to okay there's Jan Ferdinand I'm gonna go by him right you, you were never afraid of the moment you're never afraid of the spotlight you you sees you go after it you try you're here to win and that's where you're, you're there and maybe you'll blow up but you don't know that until you do it. the other thing is when you were you know when you're racing uh ben hoffman and you know you get a flat not just a flat tire but the tire is slashed and you're sitting on the side of the road for <laughs> you know for nine minutes nine minutes <laughs> so now yeah. you ended up from a race that you would win easily to a race where you're side by side mm -hmm. with another guy but you also looked at it as, okay, now I get to learn about racing side by side. So you seem to take something from what could be considered a negative experience. What do you take from the Kona experience? Uh, I take from the Kona ex experience, especially the lead up to the race, I would say. It's hard to sort of evaluate on what could have happened for me because I am very have a lot of emotions involved right. with it. So that's very difficult. But for me, the lead up... Uh, to the race it was my first time there and so a lot of people have difficulty going there and performing uh, I think in the lead up uh, my team and I pretty much did everything, everything right, right. Yeah. I think it was the perfect uh, dream scenario for me going into the race and all the sessions going into the race went so smooth I had my best friend that he was basically just covering me the entire time making sure I had uh, like nutrition and hydration all the time so I wasn't dehydrating at any point in the lead up and so that was really nice and then of course I think also when the penalty happened I think I was the race had planned out as 
we had expected and right. yeah so i was happy with how i raced until that point where and then from there on things get a little bit more complicated to sure. <laughs> actually evaluate on but you also had the experience of running with Sebastian Keenle yeah. in his last time in Kona. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. of course, that's uh, on the marathon. Uh, I'm glad that I didn't just uh, like give up. Do give up and yeah, do yeah. something stupid. Actually, having ran the entire marathon in Kona, I think, is very valuable. So totally. you know, know how that feels. And then getting to share the experience with Keenle in his last at attempt was uh, very special. So we, we don't know if it's a reality or not, but there's rumors out there and there have been some newspaper articles written that Ironman might rotate the men's race and the women's race between Nice and Kona. And next year, it would be the men racing in Nice and the women racing in, in Kona for the Ironman World Championship. Uh, nice is a good course for you. Yeah, I think if you look at it like uh, without any... Uh, emotions or right. like uh, only from a cost perspective or, or how you can say it like that uh, it's maybe even to my benefit because it has a lot of climbing, climbing in these yes. which uh, separates the strong bikers from the, the mm -hmm. others so I think from that standpoint it, it's maybe also I think it's going to be a wetsuit swim uh, which right. might also suit me a little more yep uh, but I still think it's a, it would be a bummer and I think it would be a shame that uh, a lot of triathlon uh, like people are committed to doing things together with their family or right. wife and then actually separating it so that for instance if you have a wife that's also racing then either you have to pay for two uh, oh, events uh, it m might complicate things yes. for a lot of people and so i think it, it would be a shame also because of uh, yeah the myth of the island is just it's not the same <laughs> no the, uh, the you've got a so you got a place with 40 some years of history yeah but then you could argue that if you then win the kona when it's back in Kona then it maybe it becomes even more special because it's not that often that it is there but for me I would prefer it to be on the to win it, Kona. maybe if we ra also because I've only raced there once so <laughs> if I had raced there a few times then maybe it would be more easy to right. let go of it but when you've only raced there once and didn't have the like the performance you thought you were capable of then it's yeah the other person I first thought of was Jan Frodeno, yeah, thinking <laughs> that Jan is, he wants one more shot at Kona. Yeah. And obviously, all everybody wants to go race him, and potentially, like Sebastian, his last shot yeah. at Kona. And if that becomes Nice, it's just, it's different. Not mm -hmm. to say it's worse than, but it's, it, just, it doesn't have that hi Iron Man history. I think Jan must be really sad about the, yeah. <laughs> the situation. I, Without knowing it, I it looks like he has sort of uh, based his entire life at the moment around one yes. uh, last shot at Kona next right. year, and then oh yeah, then it would mean the waiting another year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure he will. Uh, <laughs> it's one thing when you're 23 or 24. What the wife will say to, <laughs> to exactly. that. Exactly. So when you you go to your first Ironman and. You, like you've been doing it forever, a 52-minute swim and a 420 bike and a 240 marathon. When you came away from that first Ironman and knowing that you've got your Kona spot and you've won, uh, or you get second place in your first time out, what did you come away with in terms of the Ironman distance? You feel like, okay, this is a good distance for me, especially yeah, when I you felt, lost yeah. you know, nine minutes with uh, sitting on the side of the road. I felt that something clicked like in a way I found my uh, I really found uh, some people think Iron Man is a long way when you are doing it and it's not it's just a long time in your own head but mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed it actually yes. it was uh, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> fun yeah, yeah. and also the on the run I think it, there was just something inside me that uh, it's it, that was the right r very right for me to yes. do that and then we sort of like made a plan towards Kona uh, to try and see if I could uh, have a shot at the podium there. Uh, and on the way to Kona, we decided to do Roth mainly yes. because actually we didn't. Uh, we I just saw the like the start uh, field, and I figured I wanted to race against those guys. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> so and then you go to Roth, which yeah. is, is is a legendary event as well, mm. and you win that in front of huge crowds. 
Yeah, it was. I've always heard that Challenge Roth was big. But it wasn't until that I actually <laughs> experienced. <laughs> like you uh, can see some stuff on uh, videos and pictures, and but it doesn't really describe the atmosphere and how it actually feels racing there. So it was, it that really blew my mind, uh, and I really want to get back to Roth next year also. So the thing about Roth, when you climb up a Solar Hill twice and you're leading, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. I and mean, you're with Jan Ferdano, right? That's the. You know, yeah, hero. it was, uh, I think my ears were kind of numb 10 minutes after climbing up because <laughs> there was such so <laughs> so much noise. But it's so, of course, Solar Hill is uh, famous. But for me, it was basically just the entire way that it was people everywhere, people everywhere and yeah. hotspots everywhere. And also on the swim, people were clapping and sort of going yeah, they're on the walking side of along the canyon. Yeah, yeah. People cheering <laughs> for you in the swim, you usually yeah, get that. It's crazy. <laughs> and then the run, you've got the beer mile. You got yeah, the, uh, yeah. I think the run was actually, especially on the the uh, channel, the yes. dust, that was really tough uh, because there was not a lot of people out on the channel. Right. And there was, I think, one part where it was more than 10 kilometers straight along the river without a corner at all. Yes. So that was mentally really, uh, really tough. But coming into that finish area. Yeah, then you go back into town again and then on the other side and then coming back and onto the stadium, which is just uh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, it it's nothing uh, triathlon maybe in, in Kona, but otherwise I haven't seen anything nothing. like that in, in triathlon yeah. at all. Especially when that is a basic, grass lot <laughs> five days earlier yeah, and then they yeah. build a stadium yeah. for five thousand people yeah. that yeah, cheering crazy. you in and yeah. winning that race so you 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 basically built a career in one season you know when you win roth and uh you you know get second in texas first time out um the third at 70.3 world uh, winning cozumel you had an amazing season how do you follow that up uh i said that last year also that Last year I was very satisfied with yeah. my season. I yes. think I ended the year in 12th place on the PTO ranking. What are you third now, right? Uh, but now I'm in third, so uh, it's <laughs> it's it's crazy how fast things are moving, and it will definitely be difficult to like uh, yeah perform better than I have done this year. But I think still I'm so young and don't have a lot of. Of course, I'm training a lot at the moment, but my actual training age is not that no. uh, much so i think but just by uh, being consistent in training i'm improving quite a lot still i love it Mang, this is always a treat to get to chat with you <laughs> yes it's uh, nice to chat with you even though i'm actually not racing isn't that fun <laughs> yeah i That's just really decided fun. to come so all the way to daytona to chat with you <laughs> you can hang out with us during <laughs> the race it's fun to watch exactly. these things we'll get a sandwich <laughs> When they start the bike ride, we can, you know, go, go play some golf, <laughs> right? And Next then year, I might not even race. Just, <laughs> See? Uh, just yeah. to hang with us. <laughs> exactly. I like it. We'll yeah. do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That sounds nice. Magnus Dietleff has been our guest. He is watching the race this year. He's finally realized it's way more fun to watch <laughs> than it is to race. Yeah. Hold on, everybody. We will be right back.